Okay, this is the second part. The second part of our lecture. So, I recapitulate what we had in the first part. The starting point was the Ising model. We split the Hamiltonian into two terms. And we use the we calculate the variational free energy composed of these two parts. And this is the result of our calculation. Uh, this one is for system of non-interacting spins. Okay, and this is the contribution of the interaction part, where I use the notation S average knots, and we calculate that this was the tangent hyperbolic of beta lambda. Okay, so now what is the Bogolyubov uh, procedure telling us that the best approximate to our free energy is obtained by minimizing with respect of lambda, this f of lambda. So we minimize now. So we take the derivative of this f with respect of lambda and we set it equal to zero. And this will give us the optimal value of lambda and therefore the optimal free energy. So this is a calculation that we can do here. Now I skip a bit of steps. The first term we have to differentiate with respect of lambda here, but we will see that this, uh, this derivative is actually giving minus n, okay, uh, you realize it's a simple calculation, this is hyperbolic tangent of beta times lambda, okay. Now I have to differentiate with respect of lambda also this part, okay, there are two you forget, do not forget that the, our S0, uh, this average, depends on lambda. So I have to differentiate here, here, and also lambda here. Okay, so let's first do the simplest uh, differentiation. This is plus lambda n S0, which gives plus n S0. Okay, this is the differentiated with respect of lambda. And now I differentiate with the uh, lambda that is inside here. Okay. Um, I will not do the full calculation, Doesn't, it's not necessary, but you will see that if you differentiate you get j times z times n divided by 2, but then there is a factor 2 coming from this derivative, which cancels this one, and then we get s naught, and there d s naught d lambda, I do not calculate this explicitly, and there I have another term which has this minus h minus lambda n times the derivative d sorry the average is outside here d lambda okay so this is the result of this derivative but however I notice easily that these two terms actually cancel because s naught is equal to this uh, uh, this term, so these two terms cancel. Okay, so that there is only this term, and, th and th in this term, in these two terms, the derivative of s naught with respect of lambda fac factorizes. So it's it's can be taken outside of this uh, term. So let me rewrite this the f the lambda in a more compact way, so I can erase the first part. Okay, let me erase the first part because it's, it's vanishing. And now, you see that there is a common factor here, the S d lambda. For, first of all, I collect the common part, it's a minus n, then I have d S not d lambda, that is common in these two terms, okay, which multiplies, okay, then here I have jz times s0, okay, and then I can erase this part, plus, because the sign goes here, the n goes there, plus h minus lambda and this is it okay so I can erase also this part so this is the end of our calculation and so what is the optimal value it's the value which minimizes this 
quantity. So I have to set it equal to zero. Now the equation is very simple. The optimal value gives the following equation, okay? That j is at s naught. Uh, this is, remember, this one still depends on lambda, right? It's, it's written above, so I have to uh, plus or I can write it is equal to lambda star minus h naught h sorry okay so this is the solution of our problem this is the value lambda star which minimizes this uh, variational free energy okay okay so now we have done this calculation we can remove even this term let let me erase this Okay. Okay. <coughs> so we have an approximate of this volume of And so uh, what the Bogolubov inequality tells us that is that the approximate of our free energy is obtained by the minimum of this. And this is the minimum is, is given by F computed in lambda star. Okay. And now we, this is our starting point. Now we have an approximation of the free energy of our system. Okay. Good. What do we want to do next is to calculate the magnetization of our IC model. Magnetization, which is defined as 1 over n, the sum of all the spins, the average of the sum of all the spins. n is the number of spins in my system. I sum up over all the spins and I take the average. This small m is a quantity which goes from minus 1 to plus 1 okay when it's plus 1 is when all the spins are pointing up therefore all the terms here as i are plus 1 uh, summed over then divided by the number of, of terms in the sum the number of spins I get exactly plus 1 or if all the spins are pointing down then I get minus 1 uh, but these are the, the two extrema of this magnetization and this is the magnetization per spin so however so how do I calculate this uh, this magnetization uh, well this is a standard trick of statistical mechanics if I see this term here is exactly the term which is coupled to the magnetic field okay so this is a trick which is something we have seen already huh? so the magnetization is given by uh, 1 over n and if I take the derivative of the log of the partition function well, with respect the derivative with respect of h the magnetic field you see that I take down from the exponential factor exactly the term that I'm looking for uh, but I have to divide also by beta okay by the way this is so this is an exact formula right we are, we are not invoking any approximation it is how the magnetization is related to the log of the partition function but knowing that minus kbt log z is the free energy the Helmholtz free energy we can rewrite this as minus 1 over n the derivative of the Helmholtz free energy with respect of h okay uh, and that gives us the magnetization. So taking the derivative of F with respect of H, we get the magnetization. Okay, so instead of using F, now we use our Bogolyubov approximate. This again, this is an exact formula. Okay, we use our Bogolyubov approximate and we say that, okay, now let me erase this part and then continue here. 
Okay. Let me continue here. Okay, so what we say now is that we have to di differentiate with respect f with respect of h, but we use our approximate. So our approximated magnetization is given by minus 1 over n, and then I have the derivative of f of lambda with respect of h. Ah, so f of lambda star. So this is our approximate of our free energy. Okay. So I have to substitute here the lambda star everywhere and take the derivative with respect of h. Okay, now be careful. So when I have lambda star here, I have lambda star here, I have lambda star here, lambda star here, there is an h here. But h is in two places. Okay, it's here explicitly, a term which I see directly. So when I take this derivative, this is easy to compute. But then there is another dependence on h, which is in lambda star, here. Okay, so then therefore I can write minus one over n. Okay, I have to take two derivatives. One is I have to differentiate with respect of lambda star. I take the derivative with respect of lambda star and then the derivative of lambda star over h. And the other term is differentiating directly on this. But this is easy. When I take the derivative with respect of h, that gives me minus h times n times s. No. Okay. This is the result of my calculation. But the derivative of f with respect of lambda calculating in lambda star is 0. Exactly, that's what we had imposed, right? That lambda star is our minimum. Okay, So that you, you can redo the calculation, but this is a calculation that we already have already done previously. This one is 0. Actually, this term is 0. Okay, So we don't have to care about this. And then what is left here is that the magnetization is minus n and minus n goes away. I'm sorry, this one term is not there, right? Because I'm differentiating with respect to h. Therefore, I'm getting minus n this. Okay. So there was an h in excess here. And what is left here is exactly s naught. Okay. So the rest, the, the, the result of our calculation is giving this okay well it's not surprising right it, this is just saying that the magnetization is the average spin calculated with respect on uh, on the hamiltonian zero so this is an equation that we can write it here M is S naught. Okay, everything calculated in lambda star. Now we can easily combine the f these two equations that we get. This is a system of two equations. We can easily combine them because S naught is here and here. So this is giving that if I substitute, substitute m not there is uh, sorry plus in, in, instead of s uh, averaged 0 I re replace m I get this equation and therefore lambda star is equal to j z m plus h okay Yeah, so now uh, recalling the, the connection with S0 here, uh, this is M, we get an equation combining all these results that we have. We get the equation as 
follow. M is the hyperbolic tangent of beta times lambda, lambda star in this case. Okay. So the end our calculation is giving the following result beta j z m plus beta h okay so and which is the final result of our calculation and this is the important results that we will analyze in the next in the next part of the lecture okay so this is the result of the Bogolyubov inequality calculations. I remember, I recall you, we started from splitting the Hamiltonian into two parts. We have done all the calculation. We have calculated the variational free energy. We have optimized this free energy with respect to parameter lambda. And the optimization has given us the following equations, where S0 is given by this. Eh? And by solving this, two equations together I get the following result that the magnetization in the Ising model uh, in this Bogolyubov approximation uh, is given by uh, is a function itself of the magnetization so we we are here dealing with the f uh, not an explicit formula uh, of magnetization is equal to some function of magnetic field and temperature and so on but the magnetization appears on both sides. So this is what we have to solve next and that will be done uh, in the next video.